Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for joining me. My guests are here from all over. This is unscripted. That means any object that comes up, I have not seen before. For those of you who don't understand how I do this, 25 years of experience, degrees, and of course, education, as well as, of course, many years in major museums and as a professional appraiser. People go, how does she do this? I don't understand it. Well, if you watch, you'll understand it. And if you watch all the videos, you can see lots of the experience that I've had doing this. It's nice to see all of you, and thanks for joining me. So uh, tonight, the, the question of the day goes out to the folks who are going to comment. Um, my question of the day is fish sticks or chicken nuggets. So what's your preference? Put it into the comments, and don't forget to tell me where you're watching, calling, or sharing from. <laughs> right in the comments. That would be great. Guests are here. Let's see what they've got. I'm going to ask them to make sure that their cameras are horizontal. Make sure you have enough light. <laughs> Plain backgrounds are best. And don't forget to hold up your eyes. Let's, let's see what they've got. got. Um, so let's see what they've got. Let's see what they've got. So it looks like we've got a seascape in a frame. Looks like it's oil on canvas, middle part of the 20th century. Then there we go. And that's a pretty nice piece. Can you go down a little bit? Just pull it, just put it down. There you go. That's terrific. All right. Can I see the back? Let's take a look at the back. Yeah, that's what we all expected. Yeah, very bright white back. I've talked about those before. All right, let's see what else we've got. I'm going to do a little speed round because, you know, a lot of you were saying I talk to you too much. <laughs> so what? if I talk to you too much, you yeah. can do a little more of these more quickly. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can all keep up. Let's see. Then there's this piece, which looks like black glass with some blue. Uh, it looks like it's got a ruffled collar. Can we take a shot at the underside? You're really in the dark, darling. You got to give me a little bit more light next time. Okay, it's purple. Oh, that's purple. why, because you're in the dark. So if you're I in the see. dark, you know, that's that's going to be difficult. So now it's purple, it looks blue. That's the other thing. What I see is what's important. So we have to make sure that I see it. You know, some of you are saying, I don't understand why, you know, you, you can't see me or you don't, or my, my connection isn't good. I think my connection's good. Depends on what I see. So I'm trying to make sure that what I see is, of course, correct, so we can be as accurate as possible. And then I've got this necklace. There's a necklace on a stand, which is a little bit too far. There you go. So does that have a mark on it? Is yes. that marked? What's yeah. it marked on? It's uh, Giovanni. So it's a Givenchy necklace, yeah. and it says Givenchy on it. Yes. Is it on the clasp, or is it on one of the links? It's on the back of the, of the uh, clasp. It's on the back of the clasp. Okay. So that's a nice piece. And then what else have we got? Let's see. I, we have something in a frame that has a lot of glare that I can't really see what that medallion is inside the frame. Oh, it looks like it might be a painting of... Oh, no, it looks like it's a 3D of, one of, of a painted egg. Mm -hmm. Hello? Uh, yeah, I do think it's an egg. I'm not sorry. It's very hard with like the two glass to get the glare away. Yeah, well, <laughs> that will be difficult. Those are very, very popular, of course, in um, Central Europe. You also see them, of course, in Northern Europe. And then we've got this figurine dog. Is that piece marked? No. Not at all? Can I see the underside? Yeah, all right. Okay. Well... Let's see this and let's go through them. The Givenchy necklace dates to the 1970s, 1980s. Value on that piece, $850. The painting is 1950s, seascape with the frame. Value on that piece, $125. All these values based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. That means a willing buyer and a willing seller have come together to buy the piece. That's what it is. So there's two. That purple glass, I still can't see well enough, so I won't appraise it until I can see it well enough. Then you've got the dog. The dog dates to the middle years of the 20th century. It's hand built and hand painted. Looks like it's about six inches, no more than six inches. On the, on the market today, in today's soft collectibles market, which means not a lot of high values for some of these collectibles, you go no more than $45 on that one. And then one more, let's see, and you've got a bird on your arm. Oh, and then you've got this, um, this particular, I, it surprised me. I might have surprised some other people too. The bird just started moving, you know, all of a sudden things are moving. <laughs> And then you've got that, um, then you've got that, uh, that shadow box encased egg. So the egg is a work of art in and of itself. Once you put something like that under glass, then you have a different problem because basically this piece will off gas underneath the glass, which means it'll start to deteriorate pretty quickly. Uh, now the egg itself, anywhere between 
65 and 85 dollars plus the value of the frame so maybe you got another hundred bucks it's nice for home decor right home decor those pieces look pretty nice because they're three-dimensional and they're relatively unique don't forget you know the jewelry is always a popular uh, popular resale collectible and a lot of people collect jewelry whether it is of course um, jewelry like your Givenchy Chanel pieces and such or others don't forget the question of the day it's fish sticks or of course chicken McNuggets or chicken nuggets not McNuggets um, and then the other things that you want to think about of course artwork also home decor and design what's vintage mid-century pieces are usually pretty popular that white canvas is what usually keeps the value in of course that 150 to 250 dollar range don't forget to look at frames they're also something that we want to look at sports objects always collectible and always pretty valuable people love their sports teams and uh, again it's good for you guys to be with me don't forget about the binge link using the binge link and uh, of course the speed round is going to allow you guys to learn more about all different types of objects because You've been telling me all kinds of things in your comments. So I, of course, listen to those of you who are commenting positively and those of you, some of you who are complainers, I listen to less. <laughs> but I have to say that I also think that any constructive comment is a good comment. So it's fine with me. I want to hear what all of you have to say. Um, I'm glad that all of you are saying, hey, Dr. Lori, I'm watching the channel. I'm learning a lot. I'm subscribing to the newsletter, which you could do at drlorivee.com. And the information in there has helped me to up my game. If I'm a reseller, it's helped me to make money. A lot of you, actually, I had four or five different comments this week uh, of people who said, you know what? You helped me pay bills when I didn't think I could. I had a problem in the family. And uh, I actually was able to listen to and watch your videos and I was able to make something out of that. So I'm very happy about that. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. We've got a four piece statement necklace. We've got a still life, a floral still life. I kind of recognize those two arms <laughs> on the floral still life. Excuse me. I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, that's hair. Wow. <laughs> I have this long hair, it's gotta be cut like up here. I'm cutting it up here. You know, it's gonna go shave your head and then it's gonna be cut up here. I've had it. It's hair <laughs> everywhere in my home, in my office, in my car, everywhere. Oh, this hair, I don't know how people stand it. Anyway, <laughs> hey, long hair is for young people. I'm too old for all this hair. It's like everywhere in my mouth, terrible. <laughs> anyway, I digress, <laughs> sorry. Um, let's see, so there was a, a floral still life. Yeah, not a terrible painting. And then I've got something that might be a contra belt, might be a necklace, might be something else. The person with well, the oval frame behind her might be, might need to yeah. turn off the background because I can hear myself there. And I do not know what this thing looks like from this image. It's, it's like this big glass something or other way too close to the camera. It's very hard to hold your camera or your phone and then put an object in front of it too. You need to put the phone down someplace, right? And then move the object if you can. If you're moving the phone and you're trying to move the object, it's very hard to do. So let's try to get it together. All right, a little better, a little better. Or maybe you get somebody to do that. And then a decanter. And then we've got Mary with a decanter here from Michigan. So, okay. Mary, is your decanter marked? No, it is not, but it okay. is lead crystal. Okay, so it is lead crystal. It's heavy, it's clear, it's nice. I like, of course, yep. uh, this particular flowed form. I like that form all the way down, but no marking at all. It's probably Bohemian. I don't think it's American made. And I would say value on that piece. No chips, no cracks, no problems. Perfect condition. All right. And thank you for supporting the channel with the Dr. Lori Says t-shirt, the t-shirts, the mugs, the other things support the channel. The channel has been doing a lot to support you. I'm happy to do it. But again, I hope that you will remember us my staff mostly, you know, my staff mostly with things like, you know, a t-shirt or, you know, a super chat or whatever it might be. I appreciate that. It's nice of you. Those of you who say, hey, you know what, this really is helping me, you know, that would be a, a help to us to continue. Um, if, because again, there are days when I go, oh my gosh, <laughs> but that piece is a nice piece of barware. And I would say value on that piece, just about a hundred, $125. And the other thing about it is people will look for the fine crystal pieces. If you can find other pieces that are similar in their pattern, that would be helpful. Speaking of similar patterns, um, I'm looking at this blue piece of uh, glass, also glass, nice big vase. 
Um, and that one is sort of blue with some teal is how it's reading. So yes. it's multicolored within the glass. Like one side looks like a deeper sort of more royal blue. The other side looks more teal. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Correct. All right. And then is there a mark on the bottom? It's there looking, is not. It's looking pretty thin to me. It looks heavy, but the top looks somewhat thin. So, of yeah. course, blown glass, I think it's mimicking glass of the Murano style. And I would say for home decor, it's good. You know, vintage piece is pretty nice. I would, how tall is it? 12 inches? It's 15 and a half inches. Oh, so that's big. That's big. It is big. I, that's big. I would say value on that piece is going to be just about $75. Quality is <laughs> average. <laughs> like that for a well, I'm sorry. Quality is somewhat average. However, I would say the height and also the and also the color actually is helping yeah. so in terms of value. Yeah. Nice to see you. You're welcome. And then I've got these. Uh, then I've got this this necklace, kind of a statement necklace with four elements. Okay, I'll take that necklace. Is that a necklace too? That one reads more like no, a punch of belt. belt. Yeah, it's a belt. Yeah. Can you get it in the middle of the camera so everybody can see it? I know I'm working you guys a little harder tonight. Speed rounds, you got to get the camera work better. So back up, if you would, honey, and then hold it up, up straight. There you go. How long is it? 36 inches? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you guys can go measure and I'll come back to you. Because you know what? I'm not getting any younger here. You guys got to be ready. This next piece, <laughs> this next piece is four elements there. And um, how is that piece marked? It's got those two little elements here, and then it's got the four statements sort of right around the bodice. I like your glasses. So um, it's a little bit too light. Could you tilt it downward, the top? Could you tilt the top downward so we can get good contrast there? It's looking a little bit better. The light which is coming in from your right side is what the problem is. Good contrast there? Not too much contrast there. Oh, a little better. In from your right side is what the is. Okay. I don't know where the light's coming from. I don't have a light on. <laughs> well, it's right on your face, huh? It's oh, right it's on your face. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, that looks nice. So those look like they are set, of course, glass pieces. Is it marked on the other side? It, it's marked on the uh, the little tab on the end of the chain, says, but all it says NY. Oh, okay. okay. So that particular piece, yeah, that particular piece is a nice piece. Costume jewelry, not bad. I would say value on that piece, which sits about 20, 24 inches, maybe 22 inches really would be accurate. I would say value on that piece of costume jewelry is going to be no more than $75. It's nice. There's a lot going on, but I don't think it's as high quality as many of the ones that we've seen here on the show. The ones that we've seen from, of course, good, of course, Goodwill Blue Boxes that we've seen, of course, on eBay, coming from eBay shoppers and other types of uh, places. So pretty nice. And then we've got, of course, the still life painting, and we also have a, um, a figural element of a camel. I'll tell you a camel story a little later. Hi, guys. How are you? We're doing good, Dr. Lori. Good. It's nice to see you. So, you know, nice you remind me of Carmen and Dave, another nice couple, very nice couple who were showing me a lot of their um, objects for a while. And then I said this. I said, you know, a lot of you are in all the time, all the time, very regularly. People are, are starting to get all crazy about people who are in all the time. And maybe people could give other people a chance. And that couple was so nice that they took that upon themselves that they were the only ones who had been in before. And they really hadn't been in all that often. So they all of a sudden disappeared because somebody complained. And I was basically saying, yeah, everybody should give everybody a chance. And that sweetheart of a person that Carmen is and Dave, they just said, oh, you know what? We'll give everybody else a chance. And they haven't been. And they haven't. They've been watching, but they haven't been back in. So I hope that they return because I don't think that's fair at all. That was not my intention that, you know, it should, of course, be just that. I love to see all of you. I like to know that all of you are, are here, of course. And I hope that, folks, those of you who are doing what's right, you're sharing the channel, you're supporting the channel, you're enjoying yourselves, you're learning. 
I hope that they actually will will show back up soon, very soon, in fact. Those folks were from Rhode Island. So anyway, I was talking about this painting. That painting is a still life. It's an, it's an average still life. So this person has average talent, okay, ability. Now, again, I will always say this about artists. I am not an artist. I am not a fine artist. My PhD is in art and architectural history with a focus on antiques and museum studies. My years in as an appraiser, total uh, just under 25 years of doing this. So in fact, looking at that now, for those of you folks, and I had a comment recently of she's only a PhD in art history. Okay, you don't have to think anything of my credentials, but I will say when I look at a painting like that, I'm looking at mastery of, of course, this piece compared to other artists, but I am not a studio artist. So I can't sit here and say, I could do it better because I can't. And I think that's fair, right? So it's the same way if you said, you know, hey, you don't really like that singer, I wouldn't be able to say, well, I can sing better than them because I can't. So, but what I can do is appraise pieces honestly, right? And also accurately. So that particular piece has a, thank you, Betsy. I appreciate your support very much. Um, that piece has a couple of things that I like about it. I like, first of all, the way in which the composition or the front of it, there's a foreground, a middle ground, a background. I like the way you have, in fact, the contrast of the color, that, sh that scarf behind the green vase, the red scarf against the green vase. It's very typical in color theory, the way the optic nerve works. It's why eyeglasses work the way they do and such. So that's a nice piece in that respect. I like the purple against the yellow because again, certain color pairs are more stimulating. They're using those color pairs, red and green, yellow and purple. This allows your eye to say, I wanna look at that, I wanna look at that, I wanna look at that. And that's basically what we're seeing. Thank you very much, Mary, for always supporting the channel. I appreciate it. So that piece I like, can I see the back of the canvas and tell me how big it is with the frame? It is with the frame 20 and a half on the top and then long ways or up and down uh, 24 inches about. So it's 20 by 24, which is a standard size. Notice how thin the balsa wood stretcher is and notice that it is not a mitered stretcher. So this particular piece is probably not American made based on the stretcher and the size of the stretcher, the thinness actually of each one of those stretcher bars, right? Um, as well, what I um, see in it is that it probably dates to that mid 20th century time period, but probably abroad, not in the United States. So I would say value on that piece is going to be close to $200, $210. What'd you pay for it? 25. Good. That's what I like. I like you to be at about 10% because then you can move it for, of course, closer to 100%. That frame has value, but I always give you the appraised value, including the frame for a work of art. So that's very nice. I like that. And I like that you guys are doing this together and that you enjoy it together. So good for you. That's great. So I You're hope awesome. I'm not talking too much. I know I'm going through a lot of people. A lot of everyone's going, oh my gosh, she's not even talking to them. I'll get complaints about this. I know I will. <laughs> but basically, I want you to know what's what and I want you to get what's happening because it's important for you to understand what we have doing here and what I'm doing for you and what my staff is doing for all of you. And we're happy to do it. You know, those of you who are saying, you know, things like, oh, the staff kicked me off. The staff has nothing to do with, no one's kicking anybody off. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants you to learn. I want you to learn. You know what happens? You guys can all succeed more if you follow me. You can follow all types of people. And there are a lot of people who can contribute a lot of information to this overall education, this learning that everybody's doing. I'm learning as well. I always say I learn as much from, of course, uh, talking about appraised objects as anybody. But again, this is many, 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 many objects. I appraise tens of thousands of objects and have for a long, uh, for a long, long time. So Michael doesn't think that's balsa wood on the stretcher. Thank you for your expertise, Michael. I evaluate about 50,000 objects last year and pieces like that are typically constructed of balsa wood, a soft type of wood, a wood like apple wood, um, other types of wood. And typically balsa wood and other types of stretchers are what we see. So I'm sorry if you don't agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. Thank you for watching and not agreeing. Great. Good to see you. I want to focus more on folks who are interested in getting the information that they can use, as opposed to people who want to do what a lot of people do. Oh, I was in a group. I had a person today, I did a video call, and the first thing out of her mouth was, 
Oh, I was in a group and they were saying terrible things about you, Dr. Lori. Do you know how many groups I get invited to be with? Do you know how many groups invite me to be with them? All these different groups, this group, that antique group, this antique group. Many of them have very, very interesting people. Many of them have people who do know what they're talking about. But many of the groups only invite me in when they don't know something. And then when they do know something, they want to say, oh, Dr. Lori doesn't know what she's talking about. It's easy to be the target. However, what I want to do is help all of you. And I know because I've heard it from you, a lot of you are succeeding big time more than you ever have because the channel gives you information like what to look for. Not, oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's not. You know what's pretty. You know what you like in your taste, but it's about what to look for. And I can teach you what to look for. And my reselling tips, which are at drlorivee.com, they're selling tips that other people who are trying to compete with you will never give you. Those reselling tips on my website, under the research and in the blog, those things are, are information that will help you to sell and help you to succeed. And so many of you in the comments right now, if I've helped you to succeed, I want you to comment. I want to hear about it because I'll tell you, I had a week like you don't want me to be, you don't want me to have a week like that because I want to make more videos for you so you guys can succeed. There's a lot to be done and a lot of it is very, very inexpensive. I show it to you on real bargains. I had a real bargain last week. Unbelievable what somebody found and all of them are, but this one was really an amazing real bargain. So, you know, could change your life kind of money. It was amazing, amazing. Anyway, you're all amazing and it's great to be with all of you. So fantastic piece. I would say in that $250 range for, of course, that uh, $210 for that painting that we were talking about. Then we've got a fetish necklace. So a pretty typical fetish necklace that we usually associate with, of course. Um, and I should have asked Michael what his credentials are because everybody always asks me what my credentials are. So if he knows balsa wood better than I do, <laughs> maybe I should ask Michael where his credentials are with respect to identifying woods. Oh, I should ask that question because that's what I'm asked. Groups that have naysayers, I tell <clears throat> yeah, I know. <laughs> so you can read that, but groups, you know, there are a lot of people who are naysayers and that's always the case. And the thing is, I'm more concerned with all of you. I'm concerned with you folks succeeding. A lot of people who are basically, not everybody, but a lot of people who are basically, you know, in these particular, not only the groups, but just anybody who is negative. You know, I don't go around saying this one's wrong, that one's wrong, this one's wrong, that one's wrong, because I think that's just negative. I think that's a waste of time. I want to spend my time trying to help all of you do better, right? And a lot of you have said it, you know, I, you've seen it. You've seen it in, you know, a necklace that a necklace that was appraised here sold three days later for $100 more than even I appraised it. But all the people around, it in, you know, it 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 oh no, it's not worth that. Raised here, it was never, it was never worth that. Later for hundred dollars. So the per people who have me on in the background, if you can turn me off in the background, that would be helpful. So I want you to just be aware because I'm sorry, there's not a lot of people out there who want to do this for you the way I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's not, you know, you know the teachers who care about you, you know. So anyway, naysayers are going to be there. But those of you who are committed and those of you who are learning and those of you who are having fun at this, that's who I want to hear from. And that's who I want to focus my time on. All right. Now, having said that, I love fish. So I've got what looks like a fish, I don't Salad know, a fish spoon and a fork. Yes. Oh, it's upside down. Is it metal? Yes. It's enameled. Oh, so it's enameled metal. It's a uh, plated silver, I believe. Does silver it say plate? silver plated on it? Yes. Well, it there's a enamel. Well, so, so I said, is it enameled metal? So plated silver, if there's a color on it, that's enameled, okay. right? Or is am I getting a reflection from something that is blue reflection. in the room? Yes, it's a reflection. Okay. So that's what I mean about, so I'm getting a reflection. So it's looking like it's enameled. Right? It's looking like it's painted by blue because you're giving me a reflection. So yes. this is what I mean when someone says, Dr. Lori, I saw and you know, I saw the replay of me being on the show, and you said that you couldn't see my object. So you didn't appraise my object, and I wasn't chosen from this organization of all the other people, like the mash of all these people. And then it's, oh, well, I could see it. I could see it. I looked fine. You were wrong to get rid of me. You don't see what I see, you know? And I, I don't remember the guy's name, but, you know, he had that, 
Oh, you've built models. I'm not saying your credentials are bad. Well, I appreciate that, Michael. You know what? I've used stretchers from pain and Sorry to get you flustered. I am not flustered. I am tired of nonsense, Michael. I'm not flustered. I've, I've been doing this for 25 years. And let me tell you, I've been on TV sets where, you know, we had dealers who were so intimidated that they wouldn't let the TV crew actually go into their booth and get the promotion because certain folks were on the TV, on the TV set. I'm not flustered. I'm just telling you that those, those, those particular stretchers are a particular type of material. And if you identify those stretchers, those stretchers will help you to identify time, date, quality, materials, and value. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm trying to do. Flustered? No. You want to be here and be critical? You're welcome to stay. But I'll tell you what, if you think you're going to find somebody better or who cares more about you guys succeeding, you won't. My next one, there's, is there an acceptable jewelry cleaner I can make from products I happen to have around the house? Huh, job of the cat. Let me tell you, this is not my expertise. And when something is not my expertise, I don't go out on a limb and say, I'm a chemist, cause I'm not. <laughs> so I, I would say, you know, basically you're gonna have to look into that. Um, I would suggest that you look into, of course, those um, what, what are sometimes called clean cleaners, right? Those cleaners that actually come from natural materials for cleaning jewelry. But that is not my expertise. And I do not go off telling you, oh, you can mix lemon juice and white vinegar and this and that. There are certain things that are very simple. A lot of people will, of course, utilize some simple products. And somebody says distilled water and white vinegar, blah, blah, blah. But no, no. So um, I'm just saying that, that, they're really, I, I couldn't sit here and say you could mix this and mix that and safely clean jewelry. So, you know, I, I want you to be careful. Thank you very much for the super chats and super stickers. I want to know how you succeeded. I want to know if there was an appraisal that helped you. I want to know if there was an identification that I made that helped you. Back to those pieces that look like they're enameled. This is one of the examples where someone says, oh, it looks good to me. What I see is going to be important. And I'm sorry, but you're not sitting in this chair. So I have to be accurate. So it says silver plated on it, right, darling? Does it yes, say- Yes, it says the Mexico Platero. Ah, there you go. All right. So Platero and of course, Mexico. So now what we see in terms of this, lots of this stuff goes comes out of Mexico. Typically, you're going to see a value on those pieces, no more than $35 for that set. But it's a good and handsome set. If you're presenting it, some of my reselling tips are how do you list it? What do you list? And of course, how do you make that picture look better when you're listing it online? That's at drlaurieb.com. But when you're doing that, you've got to make sure that that is a good representation. And it's only fair to me that you give me a good representation yes, of your object too, visually. So now we have this and white glass piece. So it seems like we got the lights on. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's a big help. I appreciate that, hon. That's great. And everybody else appreciates it too, so they can see as well. So it looks like it's somewhat iridescent, and then it looks like it's feathered. When it's feathered, it says, of course, that these pieces are, are kind of going up. Not unlike what we see in, of course, um, handled glass, etched glass too. Sometimes you see this feathering mainly in blown glass. There's a big seam down the side, huh? No, it's everywhere the uh, change is. It's like they pulled the glass. Oh, oh it's indented. Yes, it's indented every mm. place. Yeah. Because I'm seeing your lovely manicure, but mostly your hands. Oh, so maybe sorry. you can move your hands away. But like I said, you have no way of knowing what I need to see. You know, you're trying to show it. You don't realize that your hands are in the way. So there's no mark on the bottom, huh? No, there isn't. I do like the bottom, and here's what I like about it. If you show the bottom, see that nice swirl that goes into the bottom? That yeah. indicates where they start. So when you understand the starting point, and then of course they've they've basically cleaned all of that up. That's a nice piece as well. I would say, is it 12 inches tall? Is it 10 inches tall? It's 10 inches and six and a quarter at the widest part. Yeah. So I would say that I would say that value on six and a quarter at the widest part, and it's 10 inches tall. I'd yeah. say value on that is no more than forty dollars. Okay. Oh, nice to see you. And then, and thank you for turning on the lights. It helps. Okay. Well, yeah. The speed round tonight. And then we've got this camel. Is this better? Let's see. So how did we acquire this? Uh, I got it at a state sale. All right. What made you buy it? Well, we can see. Uh, there you go. I, I don't know. I just like the features on it. And 
Did you mark? Can is there a mark on the bottom of it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just the indentation mark there. Yeah. All right. So a couple things. First of all, uh, relatively low quality ceramic and not a lot of detail. So it's a it's molded and it's done over and over and over again. And you can see, of course, some of the there, there's a little bit of decoration on, of course, the blanket for the most part of the camel, and then the the bottom of it, but not very sharp lines, not very great, not great, you know, detail of the uh, mold of the molded piece. I would say that piece is definitely sort of tourist in terms of its interest. Um, I remember coming out of Ephesus in um, near, Kusadasi, near Kusadasi, Turkey, and coming out of Ephesus, which is the great, of course, ruins, and uh, having walked through with a group, having you know taught a group about Ephesus as we went through, because I've had the good fortune to do that at many historic UNESCO sites and museums all over the world. And this particular, where, where I've learned about things like balsa wood, for example, <laughs> where I'm looking, I'm looking at pieces like that piece. And I remember that, that camel. And I remember thinking, what was the first camel I ever saw? I remember thinking, that's a big animal. I don't think I want to be too close to that guy, you know? And, you know, I'm not slight, as we all know. And, you know, I can probably hold my own, but I did not want to be too close to that camel. The camel you have, of course, is a tourist piece. Probably comes out of Asia. And I would say value on it, just for its size, probably 75 bucks. So hopefully you paid less than that. And then we have that fetish necklace. Is that still there? It might still be here. Thanks for being with me. Don't forget to tell me, Mick, is it is it chicken nuggets or is it um, fish uh, fish sticks for the question of the day? And I want to know where you're calling from as well. Super chats and super stickers support the channel. They support, of course, my staff. And I do get a little bit up in arms when people are critical of my staff because they're working very hard because, you know, I'm working very hard. So I appreciate it when you realize how much they're doing. They are doing a lot in terms of, of course, support for all of you. This particular Oh, the fetish necklace is gone. Okay, well, maybe we'll show that up again. And then we've got this piece, which looks like a stool with two heads. Looks like it might be metal. And yes. so that's going to be sort of a footstool. I would think little kids could sit on it too. And it's it's metal or is it wrapped? No, it's metal. It's metal. Yes. Oh. Yes, when I test it with my diamond selector, it just goes straight up to red. It's very heavy. It weighs... Four pounds, four pounds and four pounds and four point eight ounces. Yeah, it's a cast metal piece. Um, and I would say, well, okay, can you stop turning it, sweetie? Okay, it's copper. Yeah, okay. So it's copper, and then it's got, of course, a patination on top of it. It could be a mixed alloy as well. And then you have, can I see one of the faces head on? One of the heads head on? Yeah, okay. So you've got this piece in the manner, of course, of pieces that are going to come from South or Central America. You know, of course, you know, uh, the travelers out there will recognize those images pretty well from parts of, of course, South or Central America. And I would say um, I'm very happy that I'm building confidence. You should have confidence, particularly you women who are trying to start your own businesses. Do not let these people undersell you. Do not let these people who are, you're wrong, you're this, you're that. I'm telling you what it is. I can help you. A lot of you have, have had great success. I'm so happy. Those of you whose faces light up because you're like, Dr. Lori, I know I can do this now. I don't have to be afraid. That's what I want. I want you empowered. I know we can do this together. Watch the videos. Go to the website. Ask me the questions. I'm happy to answer them, um, even though people don't want me to talk as much. But, you know, <laughs> so then th that particular piece, I would say, is easily $80. Um, that's, of course, that pre-Columbian style, uh, probably footstool made, of course, of a cast metal. That's a nice piece. And then there was a ceramic vase. A gentleman had a ceramic vase there. So that looks like hand-painted porcelain to me. So it, how, did you, how did you acquire this? Uh, Phil, and it is Rohrstrand. And it is, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Rohrstrand? It's Rohrstrand. Is it marked? It is. And what did you pay for it? I don't know why I can't hear him. Now, all of you may be able to hear him, but I cannot hear him clearly. Yeah, three, $3. Okay. That was clear. Thank you. So hand-painted, duly marked, value on it $150. 
That's retail based on actual sales records. Can I see the belt now that they've probably measured it? How long is it, hon? 36 inches. Okay, so is it brass and then it has these elements that are set, hand set? We think it's copper. Can it be copper? Can you get closer to me? Copper. Copper. Can I see the other side? Yeah, copper. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. And it's 36 inches. So, of course, concha belt, no marks? No. No, no marks. All black, right. Black onyx stone. I doubt that. Oh. I would, it's probably obsidian. <laughs> not, they're not going to put black onyx into copper, darling. It's too much money. So 99 times out of hundred, that's going to be obsidian. Could it be jet? It's too young to be jet, you know? Yeah, so it's probably obsidian. I would say value on that piece is going to no more than 125. You might be able to get hundred and maybe 130. I don't think you'll get 130. I think you're 120, 125. That's retail. I think if you want to sell it in this market, you've got to look at my reselling tips on my website because I talk about which particular online sales outlets might be best for a piece like that. We had a gorgeous concha belt, gorgeous and real bargains. And the piece was found in the Goodwill bins. You know, the Goodwill bins, the Salvation Army, you know, shelves, uh, the places where they're actually doing it by weight. You've got to learn the marks. And I teach you the marks too. The marks are going to teach you how to have money come to you, right? And also my loop, which is a money magnet. All of you are telling me, thank God, Dr. Lori, my whole, my whole business changed when I bought your loop. You can buy it at drlorev.com through our specials and shop page. I get compensation when you purchase a loop, which will ultimately help you. So hopefully you will do that. That's on the specials and shop page, but that will show you what to look for. You'll look and you'll start to, your eye will get educated because you're going to be looking at the details. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. I'm happy to teach all of you. It's good to be with all of you. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. You're good. Wow.